All right, welcome back to another Koenji Shan Reviews, the manga show. And this is a bonus episode because finally, after months and months of waiting, we have the new release of Dracula Midnight Children Volume 2. Um, volume 1 came out back in February, February 16th of this year. And it was amazing. I did a full flip through video on it. I'm not going to recap it because you can go back. There's a link down below. You can go back and watch that if you haven't read volume number one yet. And now after months and months of waiting on October 24th, we got the release of volume number two. Nice timing right before Halloween, but I wish it came a little bit sooner. I've been waiting a long time for this. So why don't we take a look at it first, just like in the last video, I'm just gonna flip through it slowly and not talk about it because I don't wanna give any spoilers away. And then we'll go back through and I'll talk about some of the main points that came up in the story. Of course, this is based on Brom Stoker's Dracula is the model for it with many different twists and turns that Shinichi Sakamoto um, added to it. Uh, in volume one, we had that kind of botanical twist with the plants. And in here we have some different, some different twists. This is what it looks like underneath the dust cover. And let's just flip on through it. I mean, the extreme detail of Sakamoto's artwork is amazing. Of course, we have our main protagonist, Mina Murray at the preparatory school. And I'm just going to flip through now.
All right, now let's go through and talk about it a little bit. Of course, we have our main protagonist, Mina Murray. Um, she is a girl at an all boys school, as we learned from the first volume. Uh, she gets teased a bit. This is really funny. Check out this translation. She's saying that it seems the male sex was created to be in irrationally violent, but the translator missed the the there. So it means something a little bit different. Articles are important in translation. Um, she's not particularly beautiful, but she's very strong. She's a catch wrestler. That's that C-A-C-C -C that she always is saying, mentioning uh, catch as catch can, a catch wrestling phrase. There's a lot of kind of hallucinations and psychedelicness, psychedelicness, <laughs> psychedelic scenes going on in this. Um, this story arc is about Luke. Luke has been overcome by a spell from Count Dracula. Luke is not yet a vampire, but Luke is somewhat possessed. And this story arc is just introducing some of some more of the powers of Dracula and, of course, Luke's predicament that he's in. And we get the introduction of Van Abraham Van Helsing. Right here, I am Abraham Van Helsing, of course, a vampire hunter. He's a new teacher at the school, but of course he is here for one reason, one reason only. In the basement of the school are the boxes that uh, Dracula came in, in pieces, on the ship, in volume one. He quickly finds and identifies them. I'm skipping some of the side story stuff about, uh, of course, uh, Mina is our narrator as well as she is a writer. And he quickly identifies the D for Dracula on the boxes and starts to implement some preventive measures to keep Dracula in the boxes, or so we think, which is a little bit confusing because at the end of volume one, we saw Dracula forming from his pieces, recombining after being in pieces. So I'm, it's, it's a little bit confusing. I'm hoping it comes together, but I mean, it's supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to be abstract because Dracula has all these wild powers. So it doesn't have to be based in reality. That's what I'm trying to say. This is a beautiful scene inside the church, the morning mass in the church. And here we have Luke. Luke with his lady. So we don't know. So this is actually like a, he's having a vision because he's under the spell of Dracula. But here, is this Dracula? It's not specifically said. But we can imagine that Dracula came in contact with Luke at some point, And it's maybe here through these visions. His girlfriend turns old and then turns into his mother and there is his father holding a gun to his mother's head Van Helsing is filling in Mina on the predicament that they're in the predicament the school's in and the predicament that all of England is in now that Dracula has arrived from Varna these weird stains keep on appearing on the walls. Of course, from the powers of Count Dracula. This is a side scene with uh, the sister is 
possessed or she's gone mad. That's why she's chained up. But she knows Dracula is here and she's crying for Dracula. She wants to submit to Dracula to become a familiar or something of that sort. And then Mina and Van Helsing come into the room to find Luke doing this to his mother. But no, that is not what's going on. He was having a hallucination. There's Van Helsing throwing some holy water on him. See, there was never a human, just a corset that he was wrestling with on the bed. And from here, the gang, the gang, so to speak, Van Helsing, um, Mina and two other students are trying to save Luke. And it's Arthur, Quincy. Quincy is the American, the African-American studying abroad in England. Arthur, of course, is a rich kid. Joe is also there. Mina. So Mina goes off to go get some garlic flowers to put around Luke, but then suddenly she reappears. But she's acting a bit strange. Luke is reaching out to her. Why is Luke reaching out to her? She calls Luke. Then everyone figures out what's going on. And then the real Mina comes in the room and as a wrestler takes the fake Mina, throws her, and as she's in the air, the fake Mina turns into bats. So it was clearly Dracula. Amazing art. Then the bats fly through the room and out the window. Detail is just amazing. Catch as catch can, because she just used her wrestling moves. So there's the bats blasting out the window and forming into a giant dragon in the sky. So that's a new one. That's a new one for Dracula. And then the dragon breathes fire at the school, blowing out all of the windows. Which is wild. You think there's some other students here or like staff or something? There's a few holes in the story. And then now we are in Mina's mind. Dracula is in her mind as well. There we have the Count himself. Looks like the stains on the wall of the school, right? A little foreshadowing there earlier as she dances with Dracula in her mind. vision of being bitten by Dracula and then she comes out of it she had hit her head in the dragon fire explosion <laughs> and uh Van Helsing is bringing her back around and she was just having a vision she thought she had been bitten because it was very real to her but she was not bitten it was just a vision given to her by Dracula here we have a weird scene with uh, Quincy, shawl on his head, doing something in the church at night when no one's around. A little flashback to Mina, to maybe Mina and Quincy. 
and they bring Luke into the cathedral, into the church, to try to save him. He comes back to his regular age. They give him some wine. They sprinkle garlic flowers around him. Um, holy water. Now they have to give him a blood transfusion. Arthur and Quincy are fighting over who's stronger and who's going to give the blood transfusion. Um, the possessed Luke standing up. And that is the end of volume two, but we have a little short here at the end talking about a news article. Some people that live behind the zoo, maybe zoo, uh, zookeepers, sorry, some sort of zookeepers or maybe maintenance people, a couple, and them seeing an apparition in the zoo at night driving the animals wild and that's where we end with volume two my fine friends and i cannot wait for volume three it says right here it'll be out in 2023 which is yeah makes sense 2023 um spring so maybe around april you'll see, you can come back here to my channel and see volume three and until then my fine friends that was dracula midnight children volume two and Matane.